Welcome back to the WHHI TV Daily News. Duffy Stone, who is, of course, the solicitor for the 14th Circuit, is with me now. And we are going to talk about some recognition that you've got, but really what we want to talk more about. We're going to talk about that just a little bit, but really kind of all the reasons behind it. So right. talk to, let's start with the recognition about the your... You know, what you've put in place. We received a recognition this uh, last week, actually, from the South Carolina Victims Assistance Network concerning the, the work that we're doing for sexual assault victims. And, and that, that recognition was very nice. It was something that we, we certainly appreciated and we're very proud of. But the underlying reason uh, behind all of this is what we have tried to do over the past several years is bring victim services, all types of victim services, but in particular victim services for uh, victims of sexual assault right. into the community where they live. Uh, we built a children's center at our office in Okatee. Uh, prior to that children's center, children, in order to get a physical exam after a sexual assault, were being driven to the Medical University of South Carolina in Charleston. Um, once there, they would have the exam, they'd come back, and then uh, several days later, they could get a what's called a forensic interview. A forensic interview is something that is uh, performed on children. It's, a, it's an interviewing process done by an expert. Uh, primarily ours are performed by Hopeful Horizons who have people that are certified to be experts in this field sure. so that they can get the information from children and at the same time not lead them and not suggest answers to them. Uh, and so that process was something that was happening. It took days to, to accomplish. Sure. And it took place in, in multiple places and multiple locations. The services were not all available in our community, uh, and number one. And number two, th the child had to repeat that story over and over again to numerous people. So what we've tried to do with, with both our Victim Services Center as well as our Children's Center is bring all of those services into the community, making them available to sexual assault survivors, adults and children, uh, so, that, so that they don't have to travel to get those services, but also to minimize the trauma. Right. Right. You mentioned before we started filming that this is kind of kind of a little bit of a passion project for you because as a young prosecutor, you were watching this happen and people having to say these things five, six, seven, eight right. times and just being re-traumatized again and again. I started as a prosecutor in Columbia in 1989, and I'll, I'll never forget, we, we had beepers. Now, n nobody... I remember. Well, I'm glad you do. <laughs> a lot of people don't. Uh, but we had beepers, and I received a, a call uh, relatively late one night for a sexual assault case. And I went to the scene. Uh, by the time I got there, the victim had already told her next door neighbor what happened because the next door neighbor is who called 911. Uh -huh. The responding officer was already there, so she had already told the responding officer what happened. When I got there, she had to go through it again. Uh, the ambulance, uh, the ambulance uh, people as well, when they got there, she had to tell them. She gets to the hospital, she tells the nurse, she tells the doctor. And then I'll never forget this. It was about five o'clock in the morning by the time all of this, all of this wrapped up. Um, the detective from the Columbia Police Department comes in and gives her his card and says, I need you to come down to the station and give us, give us a statement. And all these times yeah. that this victim had to repeat that story, the victim was being traumatized. And these were yeah. people that were doing their job and they right. were doing, they were trying to help. But the victim was going through a process that, quite frankly, if you can take that process and you can put it under one roof and you can have all of that done at one time, not only are you bringing those services to the community, but you're also, I think, minimizing the trauma that these victims are having to experience. Absolutely. And so this center is started in 2018? We, we opened the center in 2018 as a victim services center. Their children's center was opened pretty much close to the same time. We hired Jennifer Talley, who is a, um, a, a sexual assault nurse examiner or SANE. There are not that many SANEs in the state of South Carolina, so she is basically building a program, uh, providing these services not only at our center in Okatee, but also at uh, the Hilton Head Hospital, the Buford Memorial Hospital, and the Navy Hospital. So the service is now keeping them in the community and making sure that they're available for all sexual assault victims. Well, Duffy, thank you for being here today to share this with us. Congratulations on the recognition, but thank really you. more importantly, congratulations on the work you're doing because obviously it's very important. Well, thank you for having me. Yeah. And we will be back with a lot more, so don't go away.